What we're going to be going over here is a non-counterbalancing accounting error and we're also going to be looking at the change in estimate for depreciation expenses here and for example we're going to change from the sum of years digits method to the straight line method here for our depreciation and for example here we're going to look at some equipment it's going to have a service life of 10 years and for example we're going to have zero salvage value here and the cost of the equipment was four hundred forty thousand dollars so the first thing we have to do is we have to determine its depreciable cost here and that would simply be its book value or its uh, cost here and when we purchased it at four hundred thirty thousand dollars less its salvage value well it has zero salvage value that we're estimating so our depreciable cost is simply going to be the four hundred forty thousand here okay so what we're going to do here for example for the first three years we're going to use the sum of years digits for depreciation but then at after the third year, we're going to switch over to the straight line depreciation for the remainder of the life of this uh, piece of equipment. So first off, let's look at our sum of years digits here for year X1. So you just take your service life here that you have using the sum of years digits method. In this case, we have 10 years remaining here for the first, or 10 years of service life here for the first year, and divide it by the sum of years. So the sum of years is simply 10 plus 9 plus uh, go on to 2 plus 1 here. So sum of years here over that 10 year life is 55, year, 55 here. So that fractional amount here for year X1, it's 10 uh, divided by 55 or that fractional amount times 440,000 the depreciable cost. That's going to give us depreciation for the first year here at $80,000. Then moving down here to year X2, well we have 9 years here uh, service life remaining on it divided by the fraction sum of years digits 55 times Again, depreciable cost 440000 for 72000 here for the second year. And the third year, well, we just have eight, eight years here divide, uh, remaining here divided by the uh, 55, the sum of years digits, times 440000 for 64000 So our total depreciation through the first three years here is $216,000. Now we're going to change over to the straight line method here for years four through years ten here. So, okay, so... Uh, cost of equipment, again, it's just sitting at 440000 here. And then the depreciation to date, well, we depreciated for the first three years here, 216000 So the difference gives us our book value, our carrying value here at the end of the third year at 224000 Okay, so for our straight line depreciation for the remaining years here, well, we had 10-year life here, and we just depreciated the first three years here. Uh, sum of years digits, so we have seven years remaining here. So our depreciation here for year X4 through the next uh, year, year X10 here, the following years here, would be the, the book value or the carrying value we have here at the end of the third year here, 224,000 divided by the seven years at remaining life here, and that's going to equal 32,000 here per year for year X4 through year X10. Okay, so now we've de determined our depreciation here for some of years digits in our straight line. But this is where we come into this non-counterbalancing error that we're going to be looking at. And for example here, uh, it, we, there was a failure to record the depreciation expense in year X2. And now we're getting down to year X4 here, uh, two years later here, where we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at, Correcting the error here, at the end of year X4 or during year X4, uh, we determined that we forgot to record the depreciation here for year X2. So what we have to do here, and we'll look at this non-counterbalancing error correction, it's going to go directly to retained earnings. So for our accounts here, we'll have our equipment here, asset account, that we debited here for $440,000, that was its cost. Now our accumulated depreciation, our contra account here, which was reducing our equipment cost here, uh, again, uh, these are on the balance sheet here. So for our sum of years digit here in year X1, remember we calculated that here to credit it or for $80,000 for our depreciation for that year here first year using the sum of years digits. Now this is where we come in and we fail to record our depreciation or was omitted here for year year X2 here. Again, under the sum of years digits method here. So 
what we're going to do here is we're going to have to make this correction here. And we'll look at that here. But then moving to our year X3 here, uh, we had that sum of years digits uh, at 64,000. We credit our accumulated depreciation for that. And then on year X4 here, uh, we had the uh, straight line. We converted over to the straight line method for 32,000 per year. But this is where we have to make our correction. Now remember here for year X2, we omitted or we didn't record accumulated depreciation on this piece of equipment and the air was found in year X4 here. So it's going to be corrected in year X4. Now, if we move over to our depreciation expense here on our income statement, you can see here for year X1, we debited or recorded our depreciation expense here. And year X2, that's where it was omitted. The depreciation would, uh, accumulated depreciation on this piece of equipment is going to depreciation expense here on our income statement. Depreciation expense is going to reduce any revenues that we have or any earnings that we have. But at the end of the year here, uh, that retain our earnings here, less our expenses here, get transferred over to retained earnings. Now, see it was omitted here in year X2, so we have to make the correction when we found it here in year X4. And this is a non-counterbalancing error, as it's not going to counterbalance. And we'll look at that here, but let's look at, in, it was corrected here, but then again, depreciation expense here for year X3. Remember that was at 64000 and then for a year X4 here, straight line 32000 So we recorded our depreciation expense for all our years here except that year X2. So again, air was found in year X4. It has to be corrected here in year X4. And we do that by going up to our retained earnings here as part of equity here on our balance sheet here, air correction. So we have to debit it here for 72000 See, we had to make our correction. We added it to our accumulated. It was omitted here for year X2, that 72000 uh, depreciation expense, but we have to now go and correct it here in year X4, credit or increase our accumulated depreciation here by 72000 and then the debit goes directly to retained earnings here. Debit it or reduce our retained earnings here by 72000 So you see what's going on here. Uh, with this non-counterbalancing air here, you have to make your correction here uh, directly to retained earnings. You wouldn't take since you found the error here in year X4 here, or year X4 to 72,000, you didn't move it directly into the depreciation expense and then move it over to your retained earnings here as part of equity. Uh, you have to go directly to retained earnings here. You don't go through the expense account, you go directly to retained earnings. We did that here with that correction here of 72,000. So debit or reduce our retained earnings because our retained earnings was overstated here for year X2 here because that depreciation expense was omitted and it never got into the retained earnings. So here we have to go and make our reduction to retained earnings due to the inventory error or the depreciation error that we have. Okay, so that'll summarize our example here on, what, on this uh, non-counterbalancing error here we had it, where we had a change in our estimate for, our, and with our change in estimate for depreciation expense, changing over from the sum of years digits to the straight line method.